Hello and welcome to the bonus episode of the EV Guys. I'm Richard, that's Gav. G'day. We are here again at Everything Electric. If you haven't caught our podcast with Robert Llewellyn and Elliot Richards, stop, go listen to that yep. or watch that and come back. But today, we're going to go for a really quick walkthrough. Gav's going to lead, he's got the other got camera, the camera there. Yep. So. And uh, we're going to go and have a look at some of, I guess, our highlights of the show. So let's get on the move. Okay, first thing I want to do is talk about, it's an inane subject, I want to talk about the headrests in the Kia EV6. Now there's an EV6, where is it? Right there. Because I really don't like the headrests in the EV6, and I think it's <laughs> worth noting. Okay, let's see if we can get through this without people stopping us, because yes. we get a lot of people that recognize the crappy videos I churn out. <laughs> okay. All right. G'day, guys. Oh, what? They locked the doors. Okay, so you'll have to take my word for it. But if you see the headrest in there, remember the old His Master's voice with the dog looking down the megaphone? That's what it looks like. That's like, like remember well, when... Parlophone kind of logo. Parlophone, yeah, yeah, like when you get a vasectomy and you I assume we know what it would... Just use your imagination. You've got the pillow propped up so you're watching the carnage. It's like that. It's like a hotel pillow, you know, it's like that the whole time. You clearly so, haven't... I, I, I didn't, didn't watch the carnage, so I don't know. So, well, I mean, you're curious, you know, what's going on? There's far too much information. All right, so... Yeah, yeah. With that, okay, we've, we've covered headrests. Next, there's a car that we just spotted. Well, should we have a look at that stand behind us first? What stand? The, the very Kiwi one over here. Oh, God, yeah, okay, we've got some Kiwi content here. Okay, this is Hikotron... Okay, this is worth noting because something I've been calling for for about 10 years, they've actually got it. A public charger where you can just swipe a credit card. Yes. No cards, no apps. You just rock on it, you plug your car in, and look at that. Yep. Swipe your card and it starts charging. And it's right. New Zealand design yes, technology as well. They've got some other, they've got yeah, a cable. That's that an can actual Kiwi right there. Yeah. They've got a yeah. cable <laughs> that can fill you as well, I think. Is that yeah. so, are you not a Kiwi? Oh, what? <laughs> Oh, no, you're faking it. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's All right, fine. so she's not, she's not a Kiwi. You can just pretend it. Okay. I thought she was going to say that Hamilton's not really New Zealand. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Tron, yeah. So Tron, yeah. Ah. Uh, okay. We probably won't pick any of that up on the no, microphone. No, we should through that one. We okay, should, right, yeah, okay, okay, we'll yeah. try it. If anyone talks, just hold that one close to them. All right. All right. Okay. Awesome. What's next? Oh, they Take us the car you want to show. Okay, let's yes. go see the car. This is going to be a bit haphazard. This video, yeah. But there is a car that made both of us do a double take. Now yeah. I expected Richard because he knows everything. I expected him to go, "Oh yeah, I know what that is. That's a such and such." Yes. But we both had to go, "What? Yeah. What is this?" Yes. Right through Just here. Squeeze through the gap here. Here it is. First of all, who recognises that badge? I didn't. And what is it? This is a. This, what is it? Something well? A Skywell. Skywell. Owned by, I think, Nanjing Dragon Bus Company. But the interesting thing is, this, this is already on the roads in Europe, and yes. now it's got correct hand drive. Yes. So let's have a look on the inside. Wait till you see the inside. So now, for anyone who's listening who wants to understand the, the kind of nerd side of the industry, they're trying to get ADR on this car for Australia, but it's actually, we understand, EEC certified already. So technically, it could come to New Zealand. Will it? Are we getting a nod over here? Are oh, you reckon? It Coming will. to New Zealand? It's on record. <laughs> it will. I just need to get distributors there. Ah, okay, you heard it here first. If anyone wants to distribute Skywell, then uh, yeah, they should uh, give these guys a call. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's have a look at the back, because this is designed in Milan, apparently. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. sorry guys, excuse Skywell us. Skywell is there. So can you see the Italian mysticism going on here? This is designed in Milan, right? It, I heard it was designed in Milan. It, it looks to me like a little bit of a cut price EQB, Mercedes Benz EQB. Very similar kind of upright right oh, shape. I see, to it. yeah, the, the, the top half, it's early Rav 4 style. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's so, interesting though. So, yeah. coming to New Zealand. One to watch. Well, maybe coming to New Zealand. Maybe. Let's, maybe. Just, let's just say it's coming to New Zealand now, that, then they have the impetus to make it yes. happen. Let's move on to another <laughs> stand. I, I did quickly just jump online and chat to a somewhat more experienced industry operator than my, myself who suggested that the brand might not quite make it that far. But we'll see. Oh, really? We'll okay. See. All right. We'll see. All right. Who knows? All right. 
Okay, I love EV conversions. Who you doesn't do. love EV conversions? Look at these. And who doesn't love a Volkswagen Beetle? Yes, I mean, look at this. It's yeah. adorable. Oh, it's got LED headlights. Ooh. Look at that. With a shot on the other camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. Nice look at I, I, I find it funny, the electric uh, Lotus Elise. I mean, is that kind of now a, technically a Tesla Roadster? Uh, well, I mean, it was based, the Tesla Roadster is based on the Elise, isn't it? It's yeah, the yeah. same car, just with a heavier yeah. battery pack. Yeah. So it's kind of like... Oh, yeah, simply <laughs> aim the camera at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is very on the fly, people. Just be aware. Yeah, bear with us. Because this was here last year, from memory. Yes, it is very cool. Have you, did you ever drive Steve West's Roadster? No, no, I didn't. Oh, that car is amazing, and this would be equally so, I suspect. In fact, I wonder if this might actually be a little nicer anyway, because I imagine it's got a somewhat smaller, lighter, more modern battery than a Roadster. So it could be maybe a little bit saucier. Yes. Well, this is a conversion. This is not a factory-built one. Yeah, yeah, so I mean. It's not, not yeah. a Tesla, obviously, so. That's cool. I can see they've, they've stuck the motor on to the existing gearbox by the looks of it. And then we've got the battery packs in there, inverter there. Oh, that's pretty sweet. I mean, who doesn't love an electric car conversion? There's something about them, eh? All right, oh, we've got bikes. All right, oh, that's cool. That's not really EV related, but that is cool. That, it's basically a mobile home. Why don't you walk over there? Let's go over there. <laughs> okay, wait till you see this. It's basically, sorry. A mobile home, technically, officially a caravan, because it's, it's got a trailer hitch on it, but it's a tiny solar house. And unfortunately, I don't know if this will ever make it to New Zealand, but I love the idea. It's, it's I, I suspect there house. are already items like this in New Zealand. I mean, these things are the kind of things that are relatively built to order, and I'm sure people have ordered them and component, you know, done them as components that way. These guys are doing them as a kind of off-the-shelf turnkey operation, which is, makes quite a difference. Well, come inside. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll just force people out of the way. Yeah, exactly. So look at this. This is nicer than my kitchen. It's not as retro as your kitchen. It's not as retro as my kitchen, no, no. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So we're, we're on the bottom story of a two-story building, and I've got headroom. Yeah. I'm six foot. There's plenty of headroom. Yeah, I'm also six foot. Uh, on tippy toes. <laughs> this is, look, that's got room for a couch. This size of the bathroom. It's bigger than my bathroom. Oh, good, I'll use the toilet while I'm here. Go on, sit on it. I'm not using the toilet. Sit on it. Put the potatoes out. Oh, hang on, I'm going to sit on my phone. <laughs> ah. Oh, you've just joined us for the EV guys. Uh, in a bathroom. <laughs> what's, they, what's all the YouTube uh, travel vloggers have? The Lou Review. The Lou Review? Yeah, well, yeah. it's the George Michael special. Yes, electrified right. Lou Review. I think the last time I did one of those was probably the electric uh, motorhome. I oh, see, it's got upstairs as well. And I can't show you too much into the bedrooms because you have to take your shoes off. But check that out. It's somewhere up there. As long as you're only two feet tall, you'll be fine. Oh, I love the maximising of space here, right? Eh? It's got a slightly deathy uh, stairwell here. Uh, it's a couple of bedrooms. There's one there and one there. Wow, two, it's two bedroom. <laughs> two oh. bedrooms, yeah. Uh, yep, right through. It's bigger than my bathroom. <laughs> there you go. I wonder if you could finance it as a vehicle if you can't get a mortgage, you know? Well, yeah. <laughs> but if this was available in New Zealand, you'd have to, if a caravan, you have to get a certificate of fitness for the electrics, right? Yes, yeah, so, yeah. So every few months or years, how is it, every year, three years, yeah, I'm not you've got sure. to trailer your home to VTNZ. I wonder if you get an <laughs> inspector to come to you. I mean... Ah, uh, there's got to be a market for that. Surely, there's got to yeah, be. exactly. Now, we've got a big stage over here, the Giga Theatre. They've yes. had lots of stuff on there. Nothing there now. You went up there? Yesterday, I told some inappropriate jokes. I couldn't tell if the audience laughed or not. So You've told a lot of inappropriate I have, jokes. I have, unfortunately. This is another, another conversion. This is a work of art. I saw this one earlier today and yesterday. It's got a 35 kilowatt hour battery pack in it. So range of about 200 Ks on one charge, I think in it, if you drive really lightly. Yep. It's got a net gain motor in it. Water cooled, liquid cooled. Uh, battery pack split into two. It's, it's a work of art. That's but beautiful. This is, uh, yeah. The car as much as the conversion. Yeah. It is, it is cool. It so, is, cool. is it going to live up to the Allegro standard though? Well, it's probably a bit nicer, a bit cooler than the Allegro. <laughs> um, but tell you what, I think the Allegro is going to move once I get that thing converted. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the conversion scene is really, really popular over here. They've, got like a, they've even got a company that sells a, like a full on plug in battery unit with DC fast charging and everything already built into yes. the one unit. Yes, that was there last year. Yeah. That it's an entire unit. It's got, like you said, fast charging built in. Yeah. 
and you can just drop it into any cart. And CCS as well, so you're not constrained by Chatamo. Yep. Not like my my conversion is going to be Chatamo. Yep. And oh, look at this! Look at this little thing. Oh yes. Oh, I love this. I love little little electric key class cars. The Nissan Sakura. Now, I've driven the EK. Really cool. The EK is under consideration for New Zealand. Yeah, yeah. The Sakura is selling quite well in Japan, which means in a few years' time, there's going to be a few coming it's into New Zealand. Be, oh, wait till you see and the you inside. Want one. Come check out. Check out the inside. Of course, because it's a, a K-class car, they maximise the space. They've got physical dimension limits they have to meet, which means that you've got I mean, amazing amounts of space for such a tiny car. I mean, yeah, the boot is microscopic, but then try the legroom in the back, Gavin. Yeah, yeah. Look at the legroom. I was just going to get to that. Try not to sit on my phone, but okay. So I'm five foot ten, which is like 100 and something centimetres. Now the seat reclines, I think, as well. Oh, no way. Oh, look at How's that. How's that? Oh, yeah, it's like right in. That's, uh, that's more space than your New Zealand seat on the way out. It is actually, this is much more comfortable. Oh, it's got armrests. See, when I come to power, all cars will have armrests because it's just better. This so, is really comfortable. Yeah, so for a tiny car, this is really comfortable. So 20 kilowatt hour battery, about 180k range. And they're talking about, in Australia, I think they're about 35 grand. Yeah, I think similar that. price potentially in New Zealand, maybe a little bit cheaper. But wait till we we'll get see. these on the second-hand market. We can get these key glass cars in New Zealand. I love them because I love little cars. They're, they're fun. Right, we'll get out of there. Should we swing around and check out that very other Kiwi stand that's here? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I know these guys because I have their product in my garage. <laughs> right. Over here we have Evanex, yeah, world famous in New Zealand and now yep. Australia. Yes, yes, yes. Good up. Yeah. They know. It's, it's, it's like Gloria Vale. All Kiwis, we know each other. Should we go say a quick hello to Ed? <laughs> All right. Should we get to say a quick hello to Ed? And... Yep. G'day. We're, we're making a little video here. We're having a walkthrough. Yep. So tell us about Evanex for those watching at home that know nothing about it. Welcome to the Evanex stand. So, so yes. Kiwi product in Australia. It is. It is. Yep. About nine years in New Zealand, but about a year here in Australia. So what makes this product better than every other product here, not just because it's New Zealand made? Well, it's a beautiful <laughs> design for a start. People really love the design of the E2. It's the thinnest charger in the world. And really good uh, solar diversion capability as well. That's a yes. favourite here in Australia. Obviously a huge amount of rooftop solar. And um, we get feedback that our solar conversion works really well. Uh, and we've we'll also got um, a really nice carbon reporting feature as well. So you can look at... Um, and we'll so, yeah, no, make sure you're a shot, that's all. <laughs> um, and we've got a really nice carbon um, calculator on ventures, so that box. Oh, yeah, I've seen that, I've got that on my app, because I've got, I've got one of these in my garage, it's brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that looks at the live uh, carbon emissions of the grid every half hour, and that helps you choose what the, when the cleanest time to charge your vehicle is. Right. And that's, you know, particularly in places like South Australia, where that varies massively over a 24 hour period, that's really important. That's for the, right. So I could bring that up on my phone right now, but I haven't got enough spare hands. No. So, <laughs> right, let's move on. All right, thank Gotta you, Brian. Right. Enjoy. Thanks, Ed. Yeah. Catch you. Okay. Should we have a quick look at some Polestars? Why not? Okay, I got to drive that Polestar 2 last month, 560 k's on one charge down State Highway, State Highway 1. Yeah. Oh, I've already got your charger at home. Oh, yeah, the E2. Yeah. <laughs> Right, so yeah, 560 k's on one charge on State Highway 1. G'day, hey, how, are how you going? Good, we're filming, we're doing a little walkthrough. <laughs> yeah, all right. And uh, still had 40 k's left in the E-Tank, so that, it's just, it's a game changer, now, the this, long range. This one here though, 111 kilowatt hour battery. Good lord, it's almost like getting a tan in here. How well illuminated is this stand? Yeah. See it from yeah. space. Yes, crazy. Oh, we should point out, we should just stick a camera in this guy's face. This is one of our... Giga Theatre stars, one of the everything electric stars. We'll yes, just, Jack Scarlet. Yep. yep. I'll just make him awkward by filming him unnecessarily. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, he's the head of automotive for fully charged, I believe. Yeah, and so. he owns a Polestar, I believe. Ah. Or at least yeah. if he doesn't, he loves it because he's worshipping Polestar and having driven one, they are pretty cool. They are really cool. I got to climb through this one in the Auckland showroom a few, uh, few months ago. Yep. And it is, uh, it's a remarkable car. Yeah. It's remarkable. Fantastic. No, and, really and, neat. And check this out. Check out this front spoiler. Actual space there, front spoiler. It's also got it's got speakers in the headrests as well. Check yes. this out. Floating center console. 
comfortable seats and speakers hidden in the headrest as well. Uh, the thing that I found interesting with this car is that now that I'm right up against it, it looks huge. It is a big but car. When I was coming up before, I thought initially it was a small. I initially, from a distance, thought it was like a small one. Uh, I just, it just has a, an, a shape to it that hides its huge size really well, which I think is clever design. From like 30 feet away, but you get to like three feet away and you realise this thing is massive. Yeah, it is. That's yeah. that's very, very Polestar. That whole rear design. Yeah, they've all got that feel going on. That very Nordic feel. Yes. Yes. Big wheels. How big are those wheels? Uh, 21, I think. 22. 22. 22. 22. Oh, this is cool. Imagine how expensive the tyres are. Oh, I, I couldn't afford <laughs> even the insurance. But this is cool. It's got a little thing there. You can you can drop uh, it in that little space uh, there. Yeah. And so it stops your stuff flying around the boot. That is, yeah, that's neat. I will get my hands on this. I'm Richard will as well. Yeah, uh, no doubt. And we'll take it for a blast. Yes. Gosh, what's, is that heat coming off this thing? I think it's off this, this the LED screen. stand. Yeah, let's set pixel peep. I should have brought oh, this. Well, that's doing some crazy things for the camera. No idea. <laughs> oh, that's warm. Oh, warm, that's warm really yeah. yeah. Right, okay. let's move on. Let's carry on. Let's yeah. carry on. Oh, they got, oh, look at the kids on the bikes, the little e bikes. Yeah. That's cool. You've got, you, you're the Ford filming one. Yep. That's cool. Maybe we shouldn't film other people's children. Oh, yeah, it's probably, <laughs> it's probably a bit dodgy. <laughs> okay, this is Ionic 6. Yes. Uh, very polarizing design. Uh, what do you guys think of the Ionic 6? I'm, I'm torn on it because on one hand, I love that they've gone really bold and they're doing something different. On the other hand, it is, it's not for everyone, that style. No, I, I like it just for its efficiency and it has a really big interior. That's a That's big, a comfy car. sedan. It's yeah. one of the most deceptive ones I've driven because you yeah. think it's, uh, it's a smaller car, looking yes. at the pictures on the internet. Yeah. But then when you actually you get behind the wheel, it's, it's a monster. Should we cut back that way before we head down to the end so we can loop and finish on the car? Ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Ah, because there's a car at the end. I want to show you this car. I, okay. I love it. And I, I know why I love it, but I know you probably watching this won't love it. Got some chargers here. I'm, I'm a big fan. I about you have the Kim Power chargers. I think they just look cool. I like the whole thing. It's, uh, it's got the petrol pump look to it. Yes. With the, the springs. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, neat. Keep going. Let's go. Another, another uh, talk kicking off or finishing yep. over there. Who's on stage up there? Not anyone I recognise, but I don't recognise anyone. Yeah, I'm not I, sure I either. Loop. <laughs> no, a lot of people that we don't know. Yeah. We came here last year and I think there was like, you know, a few kind of EV experts around now. Everyone's an EV expert. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now into the motorbike section. There's some interesting oh, yes, stuff yes, yes. in Look here. Look at these chonkers. Yeah, the Savic. I'd never seen these before until today. Or until yesterday, sorry. That is... Look at the size yeah, you've got a kind of a bobber look to it. Cafe racer. Yeah. But they're in preparation for full production. That is yeah, the same. Great. That is a, it's a polarizing design because it is kind of. Yeah, it's like the whole mode unit's kind of the main structural chunk of the bike. Unit. Yeah. Yeah. Neat. Interesting. You have a Savic t shirt. Do you have a, do you have a motorbike license? I do. do I do. Really? I do. Oh, so I haven't ridden one in a long time, but. I have an allergic reaction to pain, so that's why I stick to cars. I've fallen off, it's not nice. Oh, really? We yeah. have the Zero motorcycles. They are, of course, well known oh, brand. Everyone knows these. I love the off road adventure one. That's Holy kind cow, of that, that kind of touring awesome. one. That looks like a police bike. Yep. Look, there's more cars here than yesterday. There was not a seal here yesterday. And there's a seal now on really? someone else's stand. Well, my, that's my car. I think they're the BYD service agents in Australia. Okay. Yeah. Now, these things over uh, here. Okay, tell us about this. These are controversial. So, this guy is, runs this brand claiming to build these Australian electric vehicles. He's like Holden and Ford back when they started years ago putting motor bodies on things. Now, what he's actually done is gone and bought in Auckland some LDV E Deliver 3 uh, cab chassis and slapped some plastic bodies on the back. That's not a Chia van, that's a cab chassis with a very badly built plastic body on the back. Hang on. So this is actually a New Zealand vehicle. That's a New Zealand So this is, this is the Trekker all over again. <laughs> <laughs> Built it, but they put the body on it in Australia, in fairness, okay, okay, but bought okay. from a dealership in New Zealand. So he, but he's gone and covered up the LDV badges with kangaroos. And I'm all for anyone doing stuff, but I think he's going a bit far in claiming it's an Australian vehicle. Yeah, that is a stretch. I mean, Personal opinion. Let's look, look at uh, okay, one thing I want to point out. I, I don't like crapping on other people's efforts, oh. but... The panel gaps are, it's like, imagine a, a, an, an intensive meth user's teeth. <laughs> the little image for you. Um, a meth enthusiast, I think is the word. Oh. 
Oof. It's a work yeah. in progress. There's a, there's a lot That's of sealant going on there. There's a lot of sealant, yep. <laughs> my, I say go for it. My I'm biggest, good issue, on I'm, my I'm biggest being... issue is that he is, he's taken government Australian support from the EV, you know, for the EV industry to do that project. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Anyway, okay. let's put something really positive. And that's yes. the MD stand. I love this thing. Now, you had a video come out on this yesterday. Is yes. it going okay? Uh, it's doing, actually, it's doing okay. I wasn't sure how well it's going to do because, you know, this, it's not new news. This car's been out for a few months. But uh, For audio listeners, we probably need to actually start explaining things. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's a good power. point. Yeah, yeah. yeah, not everyone's watching the video. Yeah. An MG4 X Power. It's the 0 to 100 in 3.8 seconds MG4. Did you ever get actually 3.8 seconds? Yes. Did well, you? pretty much, pretty much I got on. 3.9. Yes, like, so, so I've got a uh, like a GPS based drag strip okay, kind okay. of oh, tester see, it's, thing. It's got a track mode. Does it have an accelerator? I know I relied on an external unit, and okay, I got okay. I think I got three, yeah, three point nine something or other. Which by the time you add in the tonsures, to me that's three point eight. Okay, yeah, it's a, a good and, benefit with stickier tires. Though, and it's a proper three point eight because bear in mind these guys are from a standing start for their quoting. Yeah. Tesla one foot rollout, big difference. Oh really? Yes. I didn't know Tesla did that. Yeah, yeah. That's so, that's cheating. No, cheating's a strong word. I mean, a lot of people in some sports food stuff would claim okay. it that way, but it's generally it's... embellishing. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But no, this is, a, this is an incredible car. Uh, a frightening car, because it's... I mean, they're basically, they've just taken the MG4, put 320 kilowatts in it. Uh, they've put, yes, they've toughened the suspension. They've put uh, bigger wheels and all that yeah. stuff on it. But it is still just an MG4 underneath, yeah. you know, with a few extra tweaks. So yeah. it is kind of hairy when you, when you throw it into corners. It, uh, it, it handles okay. It's okay. But they, but I, I think my issue with it is, is that they use a lot of electronics to put the power down. And I think when I've gone into a corner really hard and put power on, you can feel the car kind of cycling and thinking. And I feel like yes. they need to like increase the cycles that it's thinking at. It, it, and it's then like it'll be fine. One second after you floor it, yes. that's when it ramps up. Yeah, it's figuring out yeah, what yeah. it wants to do. And yeah. of course, and they, they put touring tyres on it, not sticky, yeah. you know, sticky uh, handling tyres. So that, that, that loses a little bit of the, cornering. The other thing it needs is like the, the Kona N, and like you've actually seen traditionally in hot hatches of late, like the, the Ford RS Focus, that kind of thing, is they need a drift mode. They need a mode which pushes more power yes. to the back or, or well, removes power I from the front. I spoke to the MG guy yesterday, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but Go I'll say on. it anyway. Uh, he pulled out, I think it was Fuse 41 that disabled the traction control and I think also killed the power steering. <laughs> uh, but it meant that him, that's him driving it, the orange one going around the corner, isn't it? Right. Sorry, the... Um, the hunter green yes. going around the corner or was it the orange no that, no that's him yeah, going drifting, sideways yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so he had to modify the car and, and <laughs> he had to do things that were slightly <laughs> litigious if i did it in order to make it go sideways i'm sure you can find out how to do it somewhere on youtube uh, um, no i got in trouble when i pulled the noise generator out of the byd so i'm not yeah. going to do that yeah <laughs> and of course the over there that's the 77 kilowatt oh. hour model okay. of the mg4 so another interesting unit here on the MG stand. I walked through first time to the, on my thing here, I thought there wasn't an MG stand, and I come back and realized that yeah. two really interesting Just, cars. Were yeah. we told the MG wasn't gonna have a presence and then suddenly they have? We were told they weren't, and then we were told last minute they were. Um, I think that's one thing we should discuss perhaps a little bit, is I think that this show needs maybe a little bit more distributor support. Yeah, I think so. It's got some yeah. good key brands and they've done a really good effort, but maybe a little bit more would be helpful. But let's move on okay, and look okay. at some other, other brands. Is uh, this, now any uh, Australianologist will be able to tell me this, but is the Aura Good Cat or the Great Wall Aura, is that the cheapest EV you can buy in Australia right now? I think it's pretty much line ball between the three of them, the base model MG, the Four. base model Dolphin, and this. Now what I want to look at is this. This thing ah, is so cool. This, is the, this has got like one. little sport, it's the GT, it's got yes. little sporty bits on it. I don't think it's any more sporty. Grunty, yeah. Or performanty, they put whatever the word is. red accents on the interior though, so that makes it faster. Yeah. Actually, one of the things I like about this car is it's got a felt interior. I know that's shallow. It's got a felt interior. It's a really comfortable car. Even the base model with wireless phone charging. I'm not quite sure I'm hooked on this. The air conditioning controls only turn it on and off. You can't, you can't, hang on, what do I want to say? You can't increase or decrease the temperature here, I don't think. You have to touch the, use the touch screen, which I'm not a fan of. But the car itself, I mean, that looks all right. It's, what do you think of the style? I, I, I quite like it. I can live with it. I think the issue they've had was they didn't get the pricing right first time, so they had to change the pricing, which is never a good thing at the launch of a vehicle. I'll tell you one thing, sorry to interrupt you there, one thing Everything Electric and the Aura, um, sorry, Great Wall Aura have in mm. common is they changed the name once everyone got to know the, bra <laughs> got to know the brand. So I'm, str I'm still calling it the Aura Good Cat, yeah. even though the name changed. Why did they change the name? Oh, uh, I, I, I don't know. No. 
market, smarter marketing brands. Someone like, in a, in a I government think office thought it was a good idea. I think they should commit to the aura brand. Yes, if, just yes exactly. Because so you know, we all the, put the content out, but the, the name on it. Problem being is that GDW, GWM are like rolling out like four brands now. So they've got GWM Ute, then they've got, which was originally Great War Ute, they've got Aura, they've got Haval, and they've got Tank. So they've got all these brands, and I think they're just trying to, well, they're building up the Great War kind of family, trying yeah. to consolidate thoughts around that one brand but this is, to me isn't a GW it's not it shouldn't be rated in the same kind of grouping as the Ute that they've got out there it should be an Aura Aura I think it's such a great it's brand a, it's just some brand it'd be yeah. great oh, yeah. there's a new car model that's been unveiled that, yes do you think New Zealand will ever get it so there is one in New Zealand for test uh, I reached out to uh, the distributors in New Zealand yes, uh, yesterday to ask we should point um, out this is the, the new electric Megane that was just unveiled yes, yesterday the Renault Megane E-Tech uh, I'm still waiting for an answer, um, but my understanding of this has been, has been reported in New Zealand that they've actually put their th this car on hold a little bit. Oh yeah. I think maybe, well, it's the same distributor as Hyundai in New Zealand. I wonder if they are just a bit cautious about maintaining their volumes over there before they add anything new to the pot. I su would suggest you're more likely to see the Kangoo. Renault is a bit of a yeah. van brand in New Zealand. Yeah, it is, yeah. Uh, Let's and just check out the interior though. It's quite yeah, nice go interior. For it. I'm going to sneak in between these people. Excuse me. Again, yeah, another car, nice like the yeah. Bora Good Cat. It's got fabric on the dashboard. I like that. It's on 80 years old. Really funky seat for a brick. I, yeah, I like this. I like this. This is cool. It's got ISOFIX points in the front seat as well. That's good. Yeah. Ah, oh, I like that won't come, you won't get those in New Zealand, though. Oh, sorry, in Australia. So oh, really? That's illegal in Australia. Why? The ISOFIX in the front. Why, why is that? That seems like a logical thing to you do. You see there, there's a no baby seat thing in the front. So that's like when we had the first BWD editors come to Australasia, they yeah. got recalled here briefly because they accidentally left. Yeah, because I know, we, yeah. when I reviewed them, I thought, wow, you don't yeah. see that very often. Yeah. So the early ones have the airbag off switch and the uh, ice fix because they were built to an, a European standard, whereas these are an Australian standard, and the later uh, BYDs in New Zealand are an Australian standard as well. I love flat floors in electric cars, man, no yes. transmission tunnels. Yes, yes. That's fantastic. I'm not sure if this is related in any way to the Aria, I mean, they are, you know, Renault oh, Nissan, yeah, they yeah, are yeah, in an yeah, alliance. Yeah. I'm sure there's probably a little bit of shared technology there. Yeah. Nice, yeah, that's electric cars that I grew up with. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and, then of course, and of course the Kangoo, a big van, or a little van, I guess. Uh, quite useful. The Kangoo, famous for being all over Auckland Airport's uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. tarmac. Oh, they're not bad little wagons. Oh, one thing I wanted to point out yep. was that over there, the, um, the MG, no, MG, Shanghai Automotive Group. Um, my brain's just frozen. There's too many cars, too many people. What's going on? Um, the van we were talking about yesterday. The oh, yes, the level 7, seven. LBB. Yes, yeah. Sorry, I have, I've, Again, only had, I've only had five coffees today. We did, so. We've discussed that a couple of times <laughs> in the podcast now. They aren't committing to bring it to New Zealand. I'm sorry, Inkscape New Zealand. What are you doing? The, that the, brand, van looks so good. Because Richard was explaining the LDV E Deliver 7 to me on the plane, and I hadn't heard of it before. Uh, and then when I got here in person, I saw it, and I think, okay, imagine a Toyota Hiace, so a good sized van, perfect for every trader you can imagine, good range, good specs, and we're not getting it. Yeah. And not bad pricing. I think over here, like 60, 70 odd kilowatts, and it's about 60 odd grand. So it's, a, grand. It's, a, it's the next Hiace. Yeah. Yeah. But we're not going to get it. Well, we might. Not, okay. If they not, listen to not us this, this week, please. Inkscape New Zealand, bring that van <laughs> sure to New watching. Zealand. <laughs> someone is, surely someone on their team is. See, uh, I still haven't got a chance to drive this yet, because ah, I know I can't because I, I haven't got a truck license. Uh, no, let's say they could, in New Zealand I would say they've got one of these spec down that you could drive it on a car license. Okay. So that's 7300, but they could spec it down to 65 and you could drive it on a car okay, license. Okay, okay. It's of a similar size to that JAC truck I drove recently. Oh, yeah, I'm going to be driving so, that um, in a couple of weeks. Yeah, so I can't see why why they couldn't do a similar spec with one of these. Um, yeah, great see Hyundai getting into yeah, trucks just, and electric yeah, So this is an electric truck for those that are listening, not watching. I just want to read out the specs. It's a, yeah. it's a I'd say, what would you consider this? mid size, large size truck? Yeah, it's a small to mid. I'm just going to get a little yeah, zoom in on the specs here. You can drive these things anywhere, there's no pollution. So, do we have yeah, any... So, okay, 114.5 kilowatt hours, 100 kilowatt DC charging, CCS, uh, and range, it says all electric range, up to 200 Ks. Yes. So that's not epic. Um, oh, yeah, so, so that JAC with a, about 150 kilowatt battery, that, would go, that got me about 
I reckon safe 2.30 on the open road. Oh really? So you'll, you'll be able to drive good. that back to uh, your home in Tikori? Oh yeah. <laughs> so I wonder if they'll let me do that. Oops. They let me Everyone drive it to Mangafai? Well, I think I've, I've only reserved it for a couple of days because I don't have the time, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, right. what else we've got here? Kind of oh, no. G'day. Oh, no. oh, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> We're churning out some more content as we speak. Yes. <laughs> yeah. At the BYD, like you, Adam. Oh, so fantastic. Stuff on BYD, right? <laughs> First one to get there. <laughs> a lot of interesting features. So another one of our... What do you think of the show? Um, yeah, it's... A lot more car brands in here this year than what were here last year. So if you're in the EV market, there's some fantastic cars here. Have you gone and booked something for the ride and drive, like an, an Ionic N or something I'm like here. that? You know, I'm going for a ride in the uh, the, the uh, Ionic Five N version. So I don't expect to go too fast, but it's going to be fun. There's no, an amazing car I'm, sitting inside. I haven't just, got behind the wheel yet. Have you driven one? No, no, no. Just a, just sneaky push of the drift button and then just you know, a little bit on the foot yeah, as you're yeah. going at the drive. <laughs> just saying. Anyway, we're to move on. No that was, enjoy. Nice yeah. to see you. I do want to have a look at the Ionic 5N. Well, let's go have a look yeah, at the Ionic 5N then. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. See, I know I've... The Ionic 5... <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Oh, we're we'll going to check out some of the drive cars in a sec. Uh, okay. Let's walk past this one though, because oh, you, he's mic'd up. Where, you, where are you from? If you, we could get a mic on you. You, you must be on you. doing oh, something yeah, for something. Yeah, I do. Yeah, but not filming at the moment. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you film for? Oh, yeah. my, my, my YouTube channel. Oh, what's that? Chris Evie Road Trips. Chris Evie Road Trips. Yeah, like, All right. BYDs. Oh, good. BYD and Free. So yeah. Oh, neat. Amazing car. So, well, there you go. All right. Yeah. Listeners, if you're hearing that, if you want to actually see what he looks like, go find his yeah. YouTube channel. If you're on video, then go find his YouTube channel as well. Awesome. awesome. Guys, have a, have a great day. Yeah, yeah we're right. Good Take it easy. Sweet. Right. Okay, so let's look at, I mean, visually it's striking, but I always love the Ionic 5 because I love I, the design. I reckon you could blast in there right now. Oh, go, yeah. I'm go, gonna jump go. In there. I'm going to leap ahead and be rude. Okay. <laughs> oh. Okay, so first thing you notice, blue speaker surrounds, blue lights. Oh, it's a slightly different interior layer. Gosh, it's, it's very busy though. I mean, that's intentional. NGV. No idea what that means. Okay, it's got drive mode selectors. Wow, that's a lot going on here. There's a, it's a very, very busy steering wheel and control center here. Oh, I really want to take this for a drive. Hyundai, if you're watching this, let me drive one. Get one from New Zealand and let me drive one before Richard. <laughs> you didn't hear that. I, I can't hear what you're saying, so I'll, leave, I'll just let you have that. But someone just pointed out something that should always be noted. Where's the bloody front? There's no fartment, there's no frunk. Yeah. Gen Disappointing. Disappointing. Oh. Oh, oh, okay. Please embellish me. Yes. Indulge me, not embellish Let's me. Let's go. This is the car I want to see that, as far as I can tell, we're not going to get this in New Zealand. Sorry, I'm leaping ahead because I'm yeah, excited. Right. Okay, now, at first glance, this may not sound, seem very striking because it's just a, you know, bubble shaped. Bit of a jelly bean. car jelly bean. But wait till you see the interior. This is the uh, Genesis GV60. Wait till you see the interior. In you go. Oh, mate, look at this. So for those that uh, are wondering, this is very close to related to the Hyundai Ionic 5. You'll actually see some of the same switch gear in there. Yep. Though, and I see they've covered the it up with tape. There's a oh, glass they've got, they've ball for a transmission shifter. Ball. <laughs> yeah. No, they can't trust us with anything. But yeah, this is, this is very reminiscent of uh, Ionic 5. Oh, that's the same style of glove box as well. Pulls out like a filing cabinet. Oh, yeah. That's cool. And, and but, but the interior, look at this. As a as a 95-year-old who likes Werther's Originals, this is like, like a gentleman's club. I love it. Yeah. Like, where do you see cream-coloured and white interiors? It's so rare. Well, an Aston Martin. And I think it's got a very similar logo to an Aston Martin. Do you think they've taken some influence oh, there? Oh, yes. I, didn't, I just realised that. Oh, and it's got the uh, side mirrors as well that are displays instead of actual mirrors. What do you think yeah. about those, those mirrors? Like, uh, the ones that use the... Hit and miss. Hit and miss. Kia EV9, they work okay. Ionic 5, they work really well. The Audi's not bad. I don't mind them. Have you looked at the performance figures on this thing? Oh, that's a good point. They are nuts. I think it's 385 kilowatts of power. Oh yeah, 394 kilowatts. 350 kilowatt fast charging maximum. Yeah. Well, this is the 800 volt platform that's yep. shared with the uh, Hyundai and Kia product. Like 18 minutes, 10 to 80 percent charge. 18 minutes. If you can find the right charger. If, yeah, well, yeah. If you, if you can get that charging speed. <laughs> and then you're basically looking for that. Maybe if you're lucky, an Alpatronic on a quiet day. Charging the Alpatronic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When no one else is there. Four seconds, zero to 100 with boost mode. And so it's not brilliant. as fast as a BYD seal or an MG4. No, that's true. But oh. I mean, 
in terms of comfort, I mean, the MGs only come in black and grey interiors. It's yes. like, you know, it's depressing. It's like North Korea in winter. Yeah. But this, this is this is a living room. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. I love it. And look at the padded seats. Oh. Yeah. Oh, bury me in one of these. Let's cut <laughs> through there and let's. Is there anything else you want to look at here? Or you, uh, should we have a quick look at the ride oh, and drive? Just a quick look at the cars coming and going at the ride and drive. Did they have this last year? The ride and drive? They did, yeah, but it was a lot smaller. Yeah. It's, and, and, and I think a lot of them at the moment looks a bit quiet because most of the cars oh, are the out cars for are a drive. Out. They're all circling around, <laughs> going around the streets. You see, so, as you're walking into the event, you see nothing but electric cars going back and forwards. So we've got the Megans, we've got some BMWs, some Teslas, some. Uh, uh, BYDs, you've got a multiple Genesis's, including a big electric sedan. Kia, uh, sorry, Hyundai Kona EV over there. Whole pile of BMWs and Peugeots and Audis over that way. You've got so many choices when driving. They see this as a really important part of this show, is that they want to get people in cars. They yeah. want to get that conversion going. <laughs> you can do a ride and drive in an electric truck. Oh, no They've way. got one is over there. The, the Mighty. It's the Hyundai might... that you saw before. Oh. With another with a body on it, yeah, different type of body. Oh, there's a Polestar out there. Yep, yep. So yeah, That's really handy. There. Oh, there's a BMW we got, we got to mention as well down the yeah. far end. And it's and it's not just about driving around a car park like some of these events go. You can go on the on like a 20 minute drive around yeah. the city, and yes, I think you so, see them. someone said they made it onto the freeway on their one. It's like yeah, it's like freeway over here instead of motorway. Is it really? Yeah, which is motorway. which is funny because it's not free. It's a Toll road. It's a toll, a toll way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so look at this. Listen now, this, I like this electric car. Yeah, we'll Keep it up. Your bag off, <laughs> <laughs> right, I think we've just got like one or two more stands to go and then we'll, uh, we can do. So why don't we cut straight through the middle of the Audi stand. Now I'll stay with you there. The interesting one here that I haven't actually had a look at yet, but I know is in New Zealand already, is that they've got the Q8 Sportback e-tron. Okay. Which is... In fairness, a facelifted uh, e-tron. Ah, but you know what makes this car special in my mind? What's that? Having suffered a flat tyre, is this is one of the very few electric cars. If I can figure out how to open the boot. Help. <laughs> Hello. You just got my fingers all over that. Okay. Just I just want to show off the collapsible tyre. Something you don't see very often. I can use that. Oops, I've just dropped it. Okay. Yes, there Look you go. That. It is a full-size wheel with a collapsible tyre. And having run out of, uh, having a, a flat tyre in the Mercedes EQC in the middle of nowhere, that is what I think all luxury cars should have. I mean, there's the space, up. look, even though they've got the tyre in there, there's still plenty of room in the boot. So, and as, I think as I said in the podcast previously, I had a flat tyre in the e-tron GT. Oh, yeah. And while I was in the Bay of Islands, and Audi's solution to it was, and this is a fantastic solution, was they put an e-tron on a tow oh, yeah. truck, and drove up to the Bay of Islands and put the e-tron GT on the tow truck and swapped them over. Yeah, the e-tron GT. Crazy. It's the only car, I've, the only press car I've ever damaged. And it was the first, one of the first ones. I scuffed the wheel on it. Ah. I, I, called, I called and told Audi and they didn't, they didn't complain. So Motoring riders they let doing me, that They for let millennia. me take cars out afterwards, so obviously I, I didn't break their hearts too much. Yes, <laughs> yes. And of course they've got the huge 4 e-tron over there. Yep. Uh, I think we've got like two more stands. Should we go have a quick look yes, at Peugeot? Yes, which is, I'm going to be, I'm going to be filled. Look at this mountain bike. Yeah. Oh, it's an e-tron bike. Yeah. That's kind of cool. wonder if you could test that. You won't scuff the wheels on that. No, I think I'll be right. It's <laughs> a chunky battery. I see a button, I have to push it. Yeah, it's not, it's not working. So I'd have to say if there was a, a stand which size for content I thought was a little bit flat, it's the Peugeot stand. They've got a few products, but they've got two E2 to lights and a partner. It's, it's more standard. Where's the, the rest car, of it? it? Where's the other cars? <laughs> Where's the other cars? Oh, I'm being a little bit mean, I guess, but, you know. I'll tell you what, I know this is kind of tragic because it's a van, but yeah. I do love the cockpit design, the E-cockpit. Yes. Is it the I-cockpit? I-cockpit, yeah. The, the, I, I it's, like the partner. Hang on, I'll get around the other side a, so you can it's see It's a it. cool... There's room for a, a frunk in there, but they haven't yeah. utilised it. The E-partner is a really practical van. It's bigger than you think. Like, and a huge amount of space in the back. And I actually think that for most businesses, it's the better option than the uh, E-Expert, the bigger van. It's got almost as much space at the back. And the interior, I think, is more comfortable than the E-Expert by quite it's, a margin. It's a, I mean, you sit in this, it's because you look over the steering wheel to see the dashboard. It gives you like a racing car feel. Mm. I really like, it's, it's a very comfortable van, this thing. Yeah. Really comfortable. Yeah. Right. All right. The room for you to lie down in the back, you go for, go oh, for a camp. A good point. Yeah. <laughs> Now let's go, I think this is pretty much the last car stand here. Yep. 
uh, though, though we should, there's the Kia oh, EV9 gosh. over there. Oh, there's the EV9, okay. So in the flat blue color too, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna have my review on the EV9 out uh, next week. It'll be next week. Uh, you can read my good. written review out in EVs and Beyond at the moment. My videos are wee way away. But uh, yeah, now over behind us, BMW. Now the iX1 and the i4 we've seen before. We actually have an i4 rental car, which yes. is been driven here, sat at the hotel and is going to get driven back, so that was... <laughs> that, yeah, we didn't utilise that, we planned on utilising the i4. We've been way too busy because of the interview yes. we got yesterday. Uh, the car in the middle is the one new one, and I actually quite like the look of it. It's the uh, so iX2. No, I don't mind that one, it's the, the iX1 that I find a little bit ungainly. Uh, no, I like that too. But the, the iX2, so it's really, a, a, it's very close to the iX1. Yeah, it just looks more modern, yeah. the iX2. Um, the iX1, yeah. it, just, it looks like a shrunk down iX3, but it, it's... it's I don't know. I don't. I don't want to upset, upset you. Upset you, BMW. But it's pretty boring looking. Eh, not I mean, everyone wants BMW money. Not though, everyone want wants something? exciting. Like you like the iX3. Yeah, I, I like That's it. It's very boring. It is. I, I wouldn't <laughs> buy it if I had the money because it's not exciting enough. But I do like it, uh, especially the sound system in that car. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no. So that's that. The iX2. I like that there. Um, also like close related to the new Countryman, the new electric uh, Countryman. Yeah. yeah. And I'm assuming that front grill is like the iX and self-healing. Self-healing? Yes. How do you so mean? the iX grill, if you give it a wee scratch or a stone chip, it, when it gets warm, it self-heals itself. What? It softens up and flattens out again if you, if you damage the front grill. What? Yeah. How? Did you not know this when you reviewed the iX? No. If you feel the material, I'm, I'm assuming it's, it's the same. Self-healing? It's not pristine. Well, maybe it's for, but, 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 but some of the BMW grills, these flat plastic grills they have at the front, are self-healing. They're literally made of a material that when the sun gets on it and warms it up, I'm not sure if the iX2 does, but the iX does, it warms up and obviously the surface just flattens itself back out again. Okay. Yeah. I'd have to see that before I believe that. I'll, I'll ask someone from BMW, <laughs> okay. is the front grill on the iX2 self-healing like the iX? No, no. That's exclusive to the iX. Ah, oh, it's only on the iX. I don't even know that. But yeah, the, the iX okay. is living. It can heal itself. <laughs> Yeah. I'm not sure it can fix itself if you crash it. Not quite sure I believe that. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> it's yeah, it's true. It's true. All right, go scratch an iX and see what it does. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> yeah, BMW will love me for that. <laughs> right. So I think that's pretty much it. Is there anything else you wanted to touch not on? Not really. I mean, there's we have, there's conversions. There's some big rig trucks down the down the back. There's one big rig truck down the back there. Yep. Uh, we've covered the guts of it. Um, yeah. There's I mean, there's so much more to see more than we have time to cover in this yes. but, but my advice to you is please come here next year i mean yeah. it's, it's almost what's that almost doubled in size compared to the first year yeah. and i suspect it's only going to grow next year please come and join us yeah. come here next year i want to yeah. be here next year exactly the vibe is so good i mean one of the, my favorite things is that you'll find yourself chatting with people all about the same things like when you go to a car show and if you're an electric car fan you have to be kind of reserved in how you speak because you'll have people go, oh, yeah, those electric cars, they catch fire. That's other nonsense, it's not true like that. Yeah. Whereas here, you can just love electric cars because they're cool. It's like a pride parade for EV nerds. It's pretty much, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You can wear your metaphorical You can wear your leather metaphorical studs le and, yeah. leather studs. I mean, I only do that on Fridays, <laughs> but here I can do it every day. Yeah. <laughs> right, well, I'm absolutely knackered. Yeah, I've got to go and head back plane. to the airport and get onto my carbon balanced or whatever the term is uh, flight and uh, yeah I'm sure you've got some more video to do you're going to put yeah, up some, still content, some interviews some content next week on the channel from next this? Friday coming up yep. uh, there's be I'll be a walk around going to some interviews with like the solar racing team and uh, some electric electric car converters nice. uh, it's, it's, it's it's more content than I can show I'm going to try and squeeze it down yep. I'll do my best I've got a full walkthrough of this as well it's pretty much the same as what we've done now but maybe just a little more detail uh, and you can go watch that as well so uh, yeah that is the bonus episode from the EV guys. A bonus episode was supposed to be short, but it's about the same That's, length yeah, as our last normal, yeah. normal episode. But this has been fun. I love ah. the, like the vibe just walking through here. We're with our people. What's that? We're with our people. We are, we're with our tribe. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Even if they're Australian. I'm Richard. That's Gab. This is the EV guys. Don't forget, you can... Go like and subscribe down below. A few people oh. give us five star reviews. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're supposed to say. Give us yeah. the five stars, yeah. something that so people might actually get yeah. to see this. Stuff. If if you want to give us, five, if you don't, then bugger off. Just don't yeah. give us a review. And if you hate us, just keep listening because it fuels your hate. Yes. Yeah. 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 Go <laughs> talk about it on Twitter. Yeah. Exactly. X. Whatever <laughs> X. It's called. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for that. We'll catch you with another episode really soon. See ya.